the world undergoes a transformation every once in a while as a way of life. These advancements have had a profound impact on our world. From the Copernican heliocentric model of the cosmos and the invention of electricity to the discovery of penicillin and the structure of DNA, it is now possible to reach yet another milestone. A new paradigm shift that has the power to change the world. The new era of nuclear fusion has begun following a significant breakthrough, so let's jump right in and find out. What is that rocket and its energy source? Why is this rocket so much better than Starship? Would SpaceX want to use it in the future? And for today's episode we will take a closer look to a fusion engine drive that is capable to get us into Mars in just 45 days. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. Where we bring you the most recent about space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. A mission to the nearest star, a mission to the moon, a mission to Mars, robotic explorers to the outer solar system, and possibly even a spacecraft to catch up to interstellar objects that are traveling through. Our system are all examples of missions that are currently being planned. If you are thinking that this seems like an overview of the upcoming age of space travel, then you are absolutely right all along. At this very moment, there are a number of different plans and ideas for missions that will transport humans and or probes to each of these locations in order to carry out some of the most lucrative scientific study that has ever been carried out. It should come as no surprise that these mission profiles bring up a wide variety of challenges, not the least of which is propulsion. In a nutshell, when it comes to traditional or chemical propulsion, humanity is hitting its limits right now. It is crucial to have modern propulsion technologies that are capable of providing high acceleration, specific impulse, and fuel efficiency in order to dispatch missions to Mars and other deep space destinations. Not only Mars, but also many further celestial bodies in space. Human history has developed through many periods. Along with that, energy sources are always discovered and changed to suited stage. We can point out several typical energy sources like coal, oil, solar energy, wind energy, water energy, and more. But there's another type of energy that is also more potential and powerful than these sources of energy, which is nuclear energy. Like many other aspects, energy issues also have a huge impact on the rocket industry. Currently, most rockets still use chemical substances as fuel like kerosene, hydrogen, or more recently methane. So, nuclear energy can I know this field? The answer is absolutely. Possible. Many companies are researching this energy to apply to their rockets. One of those companies is Pulsar Fusion. This is a UK-based startup company specializing in engine development, including engines using nuclear fuel. They are developing the largest practical nuclear fusion rocket engine ever built. Currently, this company is building a nuclear fusion chamber called Direct Fusion Drive, DFD. It's 8 meters long and is capable of containing hot plasma with temperatures up to hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius, equivalent to or even hotter than that of the sun. This will be where nuclear fusion reactions take place. In general principle, it is similar to fusion on the sun, specifically creating and confining an amount of extremely hot plasma and electromagnetic field to create high-speed thrust for rockets and spacecraft. We'll clarify this process more clearly. First, the fusion process will take place to create plasma. Unlike the sustained fusion reaction to generate power like traditional fusion methods, this new fusion engine will use fusion energy to create high-energy plasma. The fuel will be put into the combustion chamber to participate in this fusion reaction. Fuel atoms will be split into smaller nuclei called ions. This process will create a huge amount of energy and heat, turning matter into plasma like in the sun. Plasma consists of ionized particles which serve as a self-sustaining fuel source for the engine. The high speed of ionized particles will create an extremely powerful source of energy that can generate thrust for rockets. Once created, the plasma is then confined and controlled by the electromagnetic force of the electromagnetic field coils to contain and maintain its integrity. When plasma is launched through the engine nozzle, the above, energy will generate thrust to push the rocket forward. Meanwhile, the plasma's heat will also be utilized to create power to supply the remaining systems on rockets and spacecraft. This is an outstanding strength because it can optimize fuel to help the rocket increase both speed and performance. 
Regarding fuel, this pulsar fusion system will use helium-3. This is a fuel with a great potential and efficiency, especially for fusion reactions. Helium-3 has the advantage of low radioactivity and safety and produces less waste than other fuels like deuterium or tritium. This is also an abundant resource that can be found on celestial bodies such as the moon. If we can exploit them for use in fusion reactions, it'll not only serve to operate nuclear engines, but it'll also be a solution to the Earth's energy problem when traditional raw material sources are gradually exhausted. Therefore, it creates enormous potential for clean and sustainable energy production models in the future. In a recent paper, Florian Newcart, a professor at the University of Leiden, makes a suggestion that future missions would be able to rely on a revolutionary concept for propulsion that is known as the magnetic fusion plasma drive. The purpose of this device is to develop a system that gives high energy density and fuel economy that is much greater than that of conventional methods. It does this by combining components of many methodologies for propulsion. Florian Newcart is a member of the board of directors of Terra Quantum AG, a Swiss semiconductor company that specializes in the development of quantum technologies. He is also an assistant professor at the Leiden Institute of Advanced Computer Science at Leiden University. It was just recently that the preprint of his research was made available online, and it is currently being evaluated for publication in Elsevier. In this day and age of space exploration, Newcart believes that the most important technologies are those that have the potential to surpass conventional chemical propulsion. In particular, these technologies need to be able to provide increased energy economy, thrust, and capability for missions that last for an extended period of time. This is especially true for voyages to Mars and other places beyond. The Earth-Moon system, which presents significant dangers to the health, safety, and well-being of astronauts. Even when Earth and Mars are at their closest to one another every 26 months, a Mars opposition, it can take up to nine months to make a transit to the planet in the opposite direction. The total duration of a mission to Mars might reach up to 900 days, taking into account surface operations that may last for up to a year and the return voyage that would take nine months. Not only will astronauts be subjected to increased quantities of cosmic and solar radiation during this time, but they will also be subjected to the physical tool that prolonged periods of time spent in microgravity will have on their bodies. As a result, NASA and other space agencies are doing extensive research into other methods of propulsion. In a previous post titled How Long Would It Take to Travel to the Nearest Star, it was said that these ideas are also regarded to be feasible techniques of attaining interstellar travel for a number of decades. They consist of fuel-efficient ideas like electric or ion propulsion which make use of electromagnetic fields to ionize inert propellant, such as xenon gas, and accelerate it via nozzles in order to generate thrust. These designs, on the other hand, typically provide a modest amount of force and are therefore required to rely on heavy power sources, such as nuclear reactors or solar arrays in order to generate additional thrust. There is also the possibility of using solar sails, which are capable of producing continuous acceleration without the need for propellant hence reducing the amount of mass required. Nevertheless, missions that are equipped with this technology have restricted thrust capabilities and are required to operate in closer proximity to the sun. An alternative approach to the concept involves the utilization of laser arrays with a gigawatt energy capacity in order to propel spacecraft that are equipped with sails to relativistic speeds, which are a fraction of the speed of light. The implementation of this idea, on the other hand, necessitates the utilization of a substantial amount of power and a costly level of infrastructure. Nuclear thermal propulsion is another well-liked idea, and the Department of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and NASA are actively working on creating it in the form of the demonstration rocket for agile cislunar operations. A nuclear reactor is used in this approach to heat the propellant, which is typically liquid hydrogen. This causes the propellant to expand through nozzles, which results in the generation of thrust. Despite the fact that NTP has a number of advantages, such as a very high energy density and a large acceleration, it also presents a number of technical and safety issues that are associated with the handling and launch of nuclear materials. In addition, there are designs for propulsion that make use of fusion reactions, such as the deuterium-tritium and deuterium-hydrogen-3 reactions. These are the kinds of reactions that theoretical physicists have been working with for decades. Despite the fact that these technologies have the ability to produce high thrust and exceptionally high specific impulse, 
they also present a number of technical problems. Not the least of these challenges are associated with the management of the required fuel and the achievement of sustained and controlled fusion reactions. In addition, there are proposals that are more outlandish, such as antimatter propulsion and the Alcubierre warp drive. However, none of these will be accessible in the reasonably near future. In addition, there is a proposal put up by NewCard, which incorporates aspects of fusion propulsion, ionic propulsion, and additionally other concepts. Through the utilization of controlled nuclear fusion reactions as a major energy source for thrust, as well as the possible generation of electric power, the magnetic fusion plasma drive is a propulsion system designed for space exploration. The system is based on the principle of harnessing the enormous amount of energy that is produced by fusion reactions, which commonly involve isotopes of hydrogen or helium. This allows for the production of a high-velocity exhaust of particles, which in turn generates thrust in accordance with Newton's third law. Magnetic fields are used to contain and manage the plasma that is produced by the fusion reactions. This ensures that the release of energy is controlled and that it is directed in a certain direction. At the same time, the MFPD idea considers the possibility of turning a portion of the energy produced by fusion into electrical power, which might be used to power onboard systems and possibly even the reaction control system of the spaceship. In order to explore this idea, new cart started with deuterium. Tritium fusion processes. This is because DT fusion events are one of the reactions that have been studied and understood the most. In addition, they provide a clear and familiar platform for describing the fundamental concepts and mechanics of MFPD. Likewise, Newcart stated that DT reactions have a bigger cross-section and relatively lower ignition temperatures compared to other approaches, which makes it an excellent starting point. In light of this, they offer a valuable benchmark that can be utilized for the purpose of monitoring and comparing the performance of this. Hypothetical Propulsion System With this new system, Pulsar Fusion can create powerful rockets that can achieve flight speeds of up to 500,000 miles an hour or 805,000 kilometers an hour and specific impulses of 10,000 to 15,000 seconds. Thanks to that insane power, nuclear fusion rockets can reduce a lot of space travel. For example, the time to reach Saturn's moon Titan will only be about 2 years instead of 10 years like now or beyond when we have to send a spacecraft with a mass of about one ton to Pluto and that'll only take about four years. As for Earth's neighbor Mars, at the closest distance of about 54.6 million kilometers or 33.6 million miles, currently it'll take us about six to eight months to reach this planet. But with its new nuclear fusion rocket, Pulsar Fusion is confident that the journey to Mars will be cut in half to only about two to three months. Currently, Pulsar Fusion is still strongly cooperating with other organizations to develop its project. They're conducting Phase 3 of Manufacturer in the Initial Test Unit. Pulsar Fusion will aim to conduct static tests in 2024 and then an in-orbit demonstration IOD of the technology in 2027. This will certainly be one of the new solutions that can compete with current Mars projects, including SpaceX's Mars Colonization Project. Starship is a rocket that uses methane as fuel. Starship's Raptor engine is still one of the most powerful engines in the world. Each Raptor 2 engine currently has a thrust of up to 230 tons or 510,000 pounds. During the second integrated test flight, the 33 engines in the Super Heavy generated more than 7,000 tons of thrust, an unprecedented thrust record in history. In the coming time, they will also release many new generations that promise to create even more crazy performances. But reaching Mars may still be very difficult for this rocket. According to Elon Musk, at the closest distance between Earth and Mars mentioned above, Starship still takes up to six months to fly to the Red Planet. Obviously, that's long enough to raise many challenges for both crewed and uncrewed missions. At that time, nuclear-powered rockets would be a potential solution. Shortening the journey time between the two planets will solve all of the above challenges. High speed and continuous frequency will be extremely important for a difficult mission like colonizing Mars, helping us more quickly establish self-sufficient bases and cities on this planet. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my 
channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time.